From CRI Simple Numbers, this is Profitability Playbook, the Simple Numbers Podcast, a podcast for those who champion market growth and anchor the nation's economy, small businesses, and entrepreneurs. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Simple Numbers Profitability Playbook Podcast. You know, no matter how much we do this, I'm always going to Part Probably seven. struggle with that. So yeah, right. It is. Yeah. Well, I'm Mike Maxson. This is Brandon Gray. Um, Greg Crabtree is somewhere in the air, we think, uh, flying to his next location. So I guess you're stuck with us again. Hey, Brandon, funny, funny story. Um, you know, every morning when I get up, uh, you know, I have my routine, I write down my workout, make my pre-workout, I sit down, I gotta check my calendar. And I've noticed that we had the the podcast today and that we had talked about uh, you know, what we're going to do with the market update today. So that's what we're going to talk about everyone. We're going to have a market update. Um, but I, I remember that like, Hey, we're posting these on YouTube right now. And then I got to think, I'm like, I wonder if I'm wearing like the same shirt as the last one or the one before. And for those listening, I'm, I'm a total guy. Like I have a rotation. I, I, there's, I could wear the same shirt twice in a week. I don't usually don't remember. I give about it 48 hours and I forgot what I wore you know, two days ago. So, um, for those of you who watch on YouTube, um, you know, please don't get rid of me for my, it isn't yeah. <laughs> I, I typically have a simple numbers phone. Line, so. That's right. Yeah. I, yeah I, I should, I should just do that. We should just get our, our, uh, profitability playbook polos and, and just there wear we those. Right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, All right, man. Wants to work. Cause everybody won't want so. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we could do, uh, maybe little faces on one. So if you represent you team, Mike or Brandon, you know, something like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. I will stop. All right. Well, Hey, so in the midst of the, uh, you know, reading the wall street journal right here, Dow plunging down 900 points as we speak. Uh, yeah, right. Totally. So, uh, you know, uh, nothing better than to talk about a, a market update with our hundred company mark model updated through Q2 now. Um, yeah. So, so Brandon, at, uh, yeah, kick us off, man. We're, we're, we're August 5th, 2024. Um, so like Mike mentioned, the headlines as of now are all around the Fed needing to cut interest rates. So if you've been listening to the podcast, if you're a client, you've been hearing that the two years. We have just been preaching it. This isn't going to work. The, 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 they're going to, the only way to, to, to fix inflation using the tools they're using is to kill the economy. And, and what's interesting is you look at the narrative behind it, and it's been, hey, the economy's fine. Look at unemployment. Well, forget about demographics. I'm going to people feel the man. Nonetheless, unemployment's fine. The economy's fine. We're good. We've got a soft landing. And then all of a sudden, you wake up on Monday morning, and you're reaching out and panicking. You're going, this isn't going to work. The economy's run off a cliff. We're in trouble. Well, you know, we kind of been saying this common. So we're going to go through the 100 company model. And for, what, for those of you that are new to the podcast, what we have done is we've taken 100 of our clients and we try to create diversity. Think of it like an entrepreneurial Dow Jones. So we, we take all of their data. Uh, we then put it into our model that, that basically creates a $1.1 billion company. And so we can look at the trends of that company, which consists of 100 others, over time to see what's been taking place historically and also try to give us a little bit of an idea of what's taking place now and what could happen in the future. Uh, what we have found is it, it has been very accurate in terms of we will get on a call and discuss. Here's what we're seeing in the model, and entrepreneurs will, yep, whether or not their data is in it, they'll 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 agree. Seeing the same things, feeling the same things. Sometimes it, you know, misery loves company. It's good to know that that I'm not the only one struggling with a particular issue. Uh, so it, it gives us some nice little insights into what's been taking place. And here's the cool thing about it, you know, it's fairly close in terms of accuracy and time. What we mean by that is, I mean, we're looking at data for June. I mean, preferably it's August. We'd love to have had it a couple of days earlier, but it does take some time to get all the information and consolidate it. Uh, so it is a real kind of pulse as to what's taking place out there. And as close to time as you probably can get, it's not, you know, like some of the reports that, um, you know, the Fed looks at and other folks look at, that you know, data may be six months late. So we're, we're trying to keep a pulse of what's really taking place. So here, here's kind of long story short. If you go back and look at what's been taking place, really two and a half years, three years, it's been very boring in that you're seeing slow revenue growth. Right now, I believe the model percentage revenue growth year over year, it's up like 6%. Uh, 
So I mean, it's been consistently there for quite some time. You haven't seen sharp upward movement. So gross margin percentage, which uh, just by way of refresher is going to look at in the cost of goods, supplies and materials. Does that include labor? Uh, gross margin percentage, not changing. Staying very, very flat. Um, we're definitely at a point in time to where if you are experiencing cost increases from your from your on your direct materials, uh, on your equipment and those kind of things, it's very, very difficult to pass those on to the end user. So, you know, you're kind of fighting a little bit of an uphill battle. We'll talk more about OPEX creep in just a second. But that number's staying very, very low. The most current model is starting to show a little bit of weakening in direct OER. And that's our, our measure of how effective I am what type of spin that we get on our direct labor resources. So the, the folks who are either in the field or producing the product or, or producing the product in a service, I'm sorry, sir, producing the service in a service-based environment. Uh, the most current one showed a little bit of dip. Now that's one data point. It, it may come back the next month. If you look at it consistently over time, that number has actually been moving up a little bit. So it tells us that companies are very active in making sure that they have their labor spend in line to what's being produced. So I'll give you a good example. Uh, you know, let's say you're a service-based company and you look at the calendar for Friday afternoon and there's not, not that, that many calls on the calendar. Well, a lot of folks in that environment are going, hey guys, we're going to lie today, just go ahead and knock off at lunch. So they're adjusting that labor spend as they have demand. Uh, but we're starting now to see if this data point holds, that that's gotten more and more difficult because you can only get so skinny. Yeah. And in that environment, you, you got to, you can only, you got to have a, a skeleton crew at minimal. You can only get it so skinny. Well, and what you're running up to too, Brandon, is the fact that we have slow sales growth. And I, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't know people who are asking less for, to do work, right? Like, I mean, the, the inflation is still running rampant. The costs are still high. So people are not like going, I'm willing to take less to work because they all got to pay for more. So we're still having that, that uh, sort of conundrum where, Hey, I'd love to maybe reduce the labor spend, but the the people to get in, hey, it's tough to once upon a time where you can maybe replace the cheaper labor, and, and it's not the case. Yeah, and I would say right now that the data point we're seeing the most of this is kind of anecdotal as we're on calls, but if you look at the wage range, whether it's salary or hourly, that's probably seventy five thousand and below. That group of labor, the the rate of inflation is continuing to move up. So it's costing more and more to get that talent in. Um, you hear a lot of examples of like, hey, had a senior team member lead, leave, I had to bring in someone from the outside and they're making $2 more an hour than the rest of my team. You know, those kind of stories continue. As you move past that, it's still present, but it isn't as high in most cases in terms of the increases that you're having to make. And obviously a lot of that's been driven by the minimum wage increases. Um, you're also seeing that inflation has finally hit the everyday consumer. Now, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you've been going, hey, for two years, three years, really, you've been feeling the impact of it. It's like every time you turn around, things have gotten more expensive. A good example, I had a client tell me a couple of weeks ago, he said, you know, we really worked hard on our systems and processes. We trained our team that did some extra work there, improved efficiency, which is the goal, right? And then we got our insurance renewal in and it was up 20%. Well, there went the, there went the efficiency gains. Uh, so you've been experiencing that for a while. That's not anything new. But you're seeing it with the everyday consumer. Look no further than McDonald's, Starbucks, and Cracker Barrel. All mm -hmm. having to look at their menu options, look at the prices. And McDonald's has already you know, come out with things like a $5 lunch menu in a lot of markets. Because... Subsidized by Coke. Exactly. Coke. <laughs> Which is a great point because you know, as, you're, as an entrepreneur, you're in this journey, sometimes you got to go to your vendors and say, guys, we're in this together because if I don't buy from you, both of our folks. So McDonald's went to Coca-Cola. They went to Coca-Cola's largest customers and said, guys, we're in this together. Let's, let's figure this out. And so they worked together to come up with a solution to try to generate some, some margin dollars. Uh, and here's another thing to just kind of keep in mind in this environment. You can't spend the percentage. As much as you try, you can't spend it, but you can spend a dollar. So don't get caught up in, hey, we would just mark everything up 30%, 40%, 50%, we wrote. No, you've got to be cognizant of what the market is willing to pay. And in some cases, you might have to play a little bit more of a volume type game. You just got to really watch the overhead spend associated with increasing that volume and make sure that doesn't come in the back, but we're might you. 
nonetheless, that, that direct LER, we'll, we'll see where it moves you know, over the next couple of months. But that's a little bit of a concerning data because it, it's a heavy cost in most businesses. Hey, Brandon, so, before we get out of the business engine, one thing I was going to talk to you about, you mentioned there with those, um, you know, the restaurants. Um, what are we thinking in terms of price increases? Is some of that slow sales growth, the fact that we're sort of hitting a wall in a lot of industries on unable to get more price increases out? I know some of the clients I've spoken with and, and groups I've spoken with that sort of, they've sort of pushed it and and it is where it is. They don't, they're not seeing where they can get and squeeze more out of it. Yeah, well, as the economy has slowed, um, there's less disposable income. So when you think on the discretionary side of the house, if you're trying to increase the price on it, people can just let it out. They're, they're, they're going to say no. They simply do not have the money after fuel and food to make those purchases. So you're pushing up against a wall if you're in a discretionary environment. If your product or service is that you know, falls in a category, you, you can't pass a back price increase along, which is different from the last few years. You go back to 2020, 2021, you just throw it out there and people uh, so you're hitting a wall there. Secondly, as you're seeing in a lot of a lot of industries, things are slowing, less activity, and that's a trickle down effect. Obviously, uh, people are getting more competitive when it comes to pricing. So, hey, if I'm not able to sell value, you got somebody more getting out of line that's going to go. I'm going to get a more price. A good example. Now, this was on a publicly bidded project for the municipality a company I work with, and they lost a multi million dollar bid by six thousand dollars. In years past, if it was that close, they would have got a phone call and said, hey, guys, we've worked with you a lot in the past. I know you you stand behind what you do. In the long run, it's a better value. We're going to go with you. But right now, it's it's all about what that exact cost is, and they just can't. They, they don't have the money either. They, they can't afford to 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 go with the next person, even though they know in the long run, it's a better decision. Uh, so you, are, you do have some folks that are starting to undercut. I'm hearing more of that. I got a competitor too. They're starting to come down on prices or the tightening margins or whatever it may be as far as that part goes. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's just kind of pushing you against the wall. Now, there are some areas to where there's still a little flexibility. You may be, it doesn't mean you, you, you know that you can just throw it out that I can't increase the prices. I got to look at where I am relative to the market. And if I'm low in the market, there might be a little bit of an opportunity still. I would say that that window's closing. It's getting really more difficult to, to play that card. Well, and and what you're what you're to your point, if you look in the hundred company model, um, year over year, we've only been able to generate, remember if in the simple numbers world, the contribution margin, right? Um, you know, revenue less non-labor cogs, get your gross margin, gross margin minus direct labor gets your contribution margin. That is the the economic result of your work, right? Now you have money you gotta spend to to run the business. We've only been able to generate year over year, uh, you know, 26, a little over 26 million, uh, but <laughs> costs almost 25 uh, million. <laughs> so, I mean, here's a data point. So you go back, we see the, the most recent peak in profitability in the hundred company model was in June, May and June of 2021. All right. So if my math is correct. That's three years ago. We are producing three hundred million dollars more in top line since that time, and not an additional dollar in profit. So that you know, if I went to you three years ago and said, "Hey guys, you're going to grow by thirty percent, and you're going to have the exact same profit today," you'd say something massively broken. There you go. So, and once again, this is stuff we've been seeing. You know, if you've been on calls, you have been hearing us say. There, there's a problem, uh, and that now we're starting to finally see. Hopefully, the Fed wake up to that. So uh, it's tough from that standpoint. Uh, but, but you know, entrepreneurs find a way. As Greg Crabtree loves to say, "Money chases easy, entrepreneurs overcome hard." So we got to find a way. We don't have any other choice around it. We we got to figure out, okay, what what's my competitive advantage? Why should a potential client or customer choose me? And, and do I have a pulse in the marketplace? Uh, another thing that we're, we're starting to see more and more of is if, if you have a proposal out, the end user, the customer, client, they want options. It's not, it used to be, when can you do it? That the cost wasn't even consideration. Now it's, well, how much is it going to cost me and when can you do it? And then there, a lot of times folks are coming back and saying, well, what are my options? So you can get a little ahead of the game, keep the process moving and kind of going, hey, here's your options. We're partnering this with you guys. 
if you go with this option, you know, here's the good and the bad. If you go with this option, here's the good and the bad. Which do you want? And how can we work with you to at least get something good? Uh, the push, as we called it, it's another term that, you know, you just get tired of saying is very, very prevalent. Um, I had a client tell me the other day they were working on a very large project that had been taking place for several months. And they said, I'm to the point to where if they don't make their mind up and move forward, I'm walking away. Because I'm just tired of doing But, you know, it's that thing of a project supposed to start 8-1 and they go, uh, let, let's push it to 9-1. To, to we got a lot of folks out of town. Just throw the excuse out. Concerned about the election. Concerned about the economy. Concerned about inflation. People are on, on vacation. Uh, you name it. People are using the excuses right now, and in some cases, legitimate reasons to delay things. So I, I got to do my best to kind of figure out a way to at least get in the door, get the ball rolling. Because uh, many times, I mean, there, there's dollars there. Don't worry, we're at six percent profit on the hundred company, seven percent profit. Right? That, that, it, it's not like we're at zero. Now there's a lot of companies that are, but there's still a lot of money out there, and there's still a lot of activity. You just got to find a way to go get yours. And, and Greg, I think, really nailed. It. He said that. We're not in an environment to where the market is growing. So in order for you to grow market share, you have to go steal it from someone else. Yes. The, the companies right now that are winning seem to be continuing to explore those other avenues. They're just, just because there's excuses, they're not going, oh, we're just not going, we're just going to sit here. I, I think you put on your, uh, Brandon, you put out the quote by Sam, uh, there are more excuses. And he said, interest rates, election, inflation, demographic changes now than ever to not do something. And the companies right now that are sitting there going, man, I'm only at 7% profit, just like the, the model or something like that going, well, hey, that maybe that area that I seen opportunity in before, let's do it. Because maybe other people are sitting back, right? If they're sitting down, that you can stand up and, and go after it. So you, you, until you got to look at, at, at your sales team, your BD team, and you sometimes just got to answer the difficult question. Do I have a team of deal takers or do I have a team of deal makers? And we, we've got a group of, you know, a large portion of sales teams right now that they cut their teeth in, a, in an economic environment from 2009 until right now. To where you didn't have to make a deal. You just had to take a deal and not screw it up. Because there's plenty of activity. Well, that's a completely different skill set to go out here and say, all right, I'm going to make the deal. Figure figure out a way to make it work so that we both can succeed in this. So you got to kind of look in the mirror, you know, at what we're doing on the sales front, what we're doing on the marketing front, which we'll talk more about in just a moment. What's our approach? How, how are we adapting? You know, that is, a sales script is not a bad thing. Now, you don't want a robot, obviously, but the leaders right now are looking at the sales script and going, that's 2019 sales script. It's not resonating. You got to redo it. So it's tough, you got, but we got to find a way. And the reason we got to find a way is because the next part of the operation of the PL is, is that operating expense. So the business chassis, as we many times call it, and just keep in mind, you got to produce them enough horsepower, which Mike referred to earlier. It's a business engine, which is going to be your, your gross margin and direct labor. And what's left is your contribution margin to pull that chassis along. Well, to no surprise, that chassis is getting much heavier. We got a four cylinder or six cylinder engine. And now we, we bolted on a couple of tons of expense and it's doing its best. It's kind of like an old pickup truck I used to have. You had to turn the air conditioner off when you went up a hill. You'd lose, you'd lose the, the power. Well, we got to produce more power because that OPEX side of the house, if there's one consistent number in the hundred company model, it's operating expense growing. That's not that's not moving away just yet. It's still going to be in place. Uh, you know, keep in mind when when inflation is spoken of, it's from this time last year to now. We're not looking at what the cost of something was in 2021 to now. That's a massive difference. So. That part's not going away anytime soon. Like I mentioned, insurance is a big one. By the way, if your insurance agent is just getting renewed every year, you need to fire them and go find another. We're in a marketplace to where you can't put that on autopilot. It's just like anything else. It'll rip your face off. They need to be looking and giving you the best value. I had a phone call last week, as a matter of fact, to where they actually are getting some insurance savings. And I said, wow, you need to go buy that insurance agent uh a nice steak dinner because most of them right now are getting fired. They said, well, we had fired the early one, or the, the first one. We got, we got a new one now who was able to do that. So, uh, you know, make sure they're on top of their game too, as far as that part goes. And, uh, 
in general, OPEX are continuing to move up. It's a I'm real surprised, move. Brandon. Brandon, I'm real surprised though in the in the growth of management labor still. Um, and and obviously, I'm not I'm not against it on that overhead side, but I was sort of I'm sort of surprised. I mean, do you do you think that is your administrative staff growth, or do you think it's more in a, a big swath? Because we do have people that are growing up in revenue. I, do you think that's added sales, added sales team members? Uh, in some cases, uh, generally speaking, the, the growth that you're seeing there is more so wage inflation related. Mm. Maybe not as much as direct labor, but you know, there still is a, a little bit of a presence there in terms of wage inflation. Um, the the other thing is that you're seeing, we've seen this really from now, I guess, probably 12 months. People are very, very reluctant to change their management admin team up, meaning gross margins declining. I'm doing it with my direct team. Hey, we don't, we don't have work Friday afternoon. We're not going to be around. But nothing's changing with the admin management team. If anything is changing, it's incentive comp. It's not present. Sales commissions are down. Those kind of things. Yeah. But generally speaking, you, you hadn't seen kind of folks go, all right, I, I've got to, to, to figure out a way to make this bucket of my labor more flexible. Well, that's a real quick though. That's what that's what I'm seeing though. Is if you were looking at this at one company as one company, which we'd like to do. I mean, we we have we see a six and a half million dollar swing increase in the direct labor side and a nine and a half million increase on the management labor side. And and I, I agree with you. I do think wage inflation, some things like that. But also, uh, I was just curious if if I know I know some of my clients who are growing. If I could see where they've added, it's been on adding salespeople. At least, the, at least some ones there. The, and the folks that are playing offense are doing some of those things. Yeah. I mean, we'll talk yeah. more about, you know, when do you play some offense and what have you here just a moment. But yeah, the, the, the efficiency usage of that number has been the Achilles heel of the other company model. It, it, it has just been flat to the con, flat to the con. And it's because we're not adapting that. And, you know, people still have a little PTSD from losing a team member, trying to go get another one. They have crazy salary demands. You finally get them in place. It took you twice as long and twice as expensive as you thought it was going to be. You get them in place and the economy starts to cool and things slow down. And you go, I don't want to go through that. I, I've got to hold on to this team in order to make it out. In some cases, you know, there are some key team members who are bigger, but a lot of other cases, we have people that are not at their highest and best use. And that's the first place you look at when you go to right size in that management structure. You may no longer need two managers. You may need one manager and a rock star admin assistant. Well, that admin assistant comes at a fraction of cost that that second manager did. So you can still, you know, get the job done uh, if you keep that manager their eyes to best use and then pass on the things that aren't to that admin assistant. So thinking a little bit differently in terms of what that structure may look like. That's that's been a big one that. You know, you're finally starting to see some people cry uncle and go, I don't like it. I wish I didn't have to, but I've got to change that team structure. Up. Hey, one thing I have seen, Brandon, that I've been pretty happy about is in some of these small businesses is the return of the owner into the sales, which has always been my one of my favorite. Like when things are going good, you know, the owner wants to do some CEOing and then they're like, all right, I'm going to go hire a sales guy, go do that. And, and as things have changed now, it's like, oh, okay, I gotta, I'm going to step back into that, which honestly, everyone, I just want to let you know, I'm a raging fan of as a small business, the highest and best use for the owner is out there selling. Um, so uh, it's, I'm a fan of that. That is one of my my favorite plays to run in small business. And then obviously, as you continue to scale, you get plus 5 million in revenue. It starts to make sense, but I love the, I love the CEO and the sales role. Yep. Well, even if you're a larger company, you may not be the day to day sales, but you you need to own it. You know, the, the sales team needs to be reporting back to you in some form or fashion because I can tell you, nobody's going to care about revenue in, in the business as much as you do, uh, margin in the business as much as you do. So, with you 100% there, exactly right. Um, you may you can sit over there riding the shotgun. You got to reach over there down and grab that wheel. Guys, and put us a ditch here. So yeah, the ma the management they are continually going down, not finding a way to leverage that. If you're if capital's getting tight, you got to make those moves. That that's definitely got you know ha has to be explored. Um, another you know kind of back to the op ex. Let's talk a little bit about marketing. So Mike, are you seeing anything out there that's working from a marketing standpoint? No, 
it's a bane of my existence right now, man. Like that's what we talk about: sales and marketing, sales and marketing. And you know, we we work with some marketing companies. They're really good. They're trying to do a good job. And it's I'm never wanting to talk down on them or anything. I just don't know if it, it, it's the market forces coming together with it. Um, and it, once upon a time, you'd have some, you'd see some consistency, right? Like you would, you, you, you gotta agree, Brandon, like you'd have a time where like, Hey, digital's working good. Like, Hey, you know, people are investing in digital and just getting returns. Um, and right now there's no consistency. You could, for one guy in the same industry, digital marketing could be working for another guy in the same industry, right down the road. It's not, and it's, it's all over the place and there's no real, uh, I just can't get a beat on it whatsoever. Well, I mean, it, it is an unsolved mystery. Uh, the market has changed. When you look at almighty Google and what all's going on there, of course, you know, when you get to be judge, jury, executioner, you, know, you get to control everything, right? And they're doing that. They're changing things every day or every other day. It's that, you know, you hear the story of you know, things working great with our SEO and with our digital ads and we come in the next day and we don't exist. What, what happened, you know? Um, so, so definitely they're, they're changing things. The consumers changed, you know, you've got to, once again, look at the competitive advantage and see why they should be doing business with you and your messaging has to change. Uh, we're just in a different environment than we've ever been. And if you haven't changed what you're doing on the marketing front, and, and I'll, I'll share with you the story that I hear many times from clients, marketing company or internal marketing is not working out. We're going to make a change. You interview another marketing firm and they tell you, hey, we got a great plan for you. Here's what we're going to do. Get y'all excited. And you start to unroll the plan. And you go, well, that's exactly what we've been doing. Why should we move forward? Well, we're we're better at it than the other folks were. Or you just weren't spending enough money. And I, and I would attest both of those are terrible reasons to, to make the change. Uh, so, you know, the thing just as an industry, the marketing industry does have some soul searching to do. Uh, it's critical components not going away. It's very much needed, but have to figure out the best way to cost in a cost effective manner to get a return and connect with the with the customer part. And that part's just missing. So, yeah, and remember, Brandon, the uh, the return on investment on that marketing spend too. I mean, I've gotten um, I've I've seen some proposals come through for a few of my clients to work with some companies, and they're big numbers to work with them. And, and it looks like a great plan, and, and I can't speak to what is involved there, but when we ask her a question of, hey, you're going to get a greater than 50% return on invested capital in that marketing spend, for those listening, we'll plug Greg's second book. He actually used marketing as an example of launch yep. capital into a business to grow, and we're all having trouble sitting there going, oh, I don't really know if I can... I don't have a lot of sales trend right now. I don't have a profit trend right now, and this company is asking for a $90,000 a year investment. Am I going to am I going to recoup that? And then some, and I don't, you know, it's been, it's been a difficult sell for them. I, I'm, I'm sure the marketing companies out there know like, Hey, this is a great product we're offering, but you can then see when we talk about this hundred company model where people might be reluctant to then go buy from you, you right. know, and, and it's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's just that that's the market and that return there. It's, it's really sketchy to see if you're going to get it. Yeah, and, and best example I have as a client, we actually met with their marketing company. And we're happy to do this. And we went through the, the 50% return and why we come up with, how we come up with that number, why that number is important. And, and, you know, it's not about clicks and it's not about lead flow entirely. Uh, it's not about website visits. It's about return in terms of profit. And, and at first they were, they, they were little, uh, they, they weren't bought in, you know, they're, they, they thought, well, we can't control profit. And we said, look, it is obviously in our best interest to generate as much profit as possible. So, Here's the spend and here's what we get. Once they got on board, they actually you know, bought into it and it worked out quite well. But making sure that they understand what the metrics for success look like. That but why is that changing? It's not working. It's wrong. So nonetheless, you look at the overall net income, and like I said earlier, 300 million more in revenue, no real change. The most current R12 data is actually showing a little bit. We got two months of declining trend in the overall net operating income and under copy model. If you look back at that trend across time, it, it levels out. But the most recent is your single dip. So, you know, it's kind of like what we've been saying for the past two years. It's not working. It's a it is crazy, fire. though. It is crazy, though. I know it's bigger numbers and we can't set, spend a percentage. I get that part. But it is crazy that pre-COVID, 
the 100 company model, December of 2019, we're at 6.6% profit. And right now we're at 6.63% profit. I, I mean, it just, they just crazy. I know bigger numbers, but that's, that's how much inflation and price increases and everything right. involved. Uh, I'm mistaken. It. So let's kind of fill the onion back just a little bit. That was a high level overview. If you got questions on that, just shoot us an email. And we're happy to, to chat. It. If you drill down into, well, you know, where, where are things at? What is actually working? So first one to give me. Anything related to a government spend is still really strong. Matter of fact, you know, there's some data points out there if you want to look them up. If you remove government spend from GDP, what does it look like? It, you know, it, it definitely is is kind of pulling some things along. Yeah, I mean, we're still borrowing 1.3 trillion dollars a year to pay for our stuff. So yeah, <laughs> the American way. So, uh, yeah. so government, anything related to it, still pretty strong. Professional services, in particular, home services. Hey, uh, we're in Alabama at eight o'clock this morning. It was 90 degrees. I think a high of 97 today and a heat index of 20. If my HVAC goes out, I've got to do something. It's, it, it's turned into necessity. It, you know, the sink or toilet's clogged, I got to do something. And so those professional services are still doing okay. Are they as high as they once were? In some cases, yes. In other cases, you've seen a little bit of a slip. And back to the HVAC example, a lot of consumers three, four years ago would go, hey, yeah, that unit's 10 years old. It's 2000 bucks more. I'll just replace the unit versus, well, I got to put a new compressor in, but I don't have the extra two grand to replace the entire unit. So I understand it's probably not the best move, but it's the only move I can make today. So within that, you've kind of seen a little bit of a shift, but those are still doing fairly well, hanging in there. Like we said, we like boring businesses. Those can be kind of boring. The more you move away from that into discretionary, the more difficult. Uh, you look at the retail sector. So in our hundred company model, we got, you know, a retail sector that we're looking at and it is it, it, frightening. Uh, gross margin dollars have flattened to declining. OPEX continues to go up, particularly, especially with online retail, a lot of marketing dollars have to go into that and net income's just tanking. And they're sitting on inventory that they can't move. So the ones who managed inventory well, their, their capital's okay. The ones who didn't, they're in an ugly position. It's hard to make payroll and you know, give the team shoes or clothes or household items i mean i expect cash so you're, you're you're seeing that one as a definitely a struggle on the healthcare side still pretty decent that's typically in a time of a recession uh you expect to see but that being said too reimbursement is still lagging behind inflation uh, i was with a dental client uh, earlier this week they got 10 percent revenue growth and zero percent growth in profit and it's because the inflationary cost to have come in and any revenue growth that they've had, it's absorbed it because reimbursement's lagging behind all of that. The good news is, is that they're not going backwards, but nonetheless, they're facing that. Things like industrial, wholesale, and what have you, we're both seeing downward turns in the 100 company model as of date with those. Uh, real estate sector, anything tied to interest rates, it is crickets. Uh, that, that sector will get back up and going, but we have to see some movement on interest rates. That's the key dog. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you all listening, but uh, retail right now, like, uh, okay, maybe I'm just that naive, but, uh, you know, once upon a time, you'd be like, I'm just going to go to the store or pick up a new polo shirt or whatever. And uh, I like just on my Instagram feed alone, I will get advertisements. So I don't know how many, you know, opportunities to buy more clothing. Like it just, they're, they're popping up all over the place. These online retailers. Um, I mean, competition just seems wild yes. in that right now. Um, it That's just, it. I mean, and then just bombarded uh, digitally with, oh, look at that. I'll buy a shirt from there, buy a shirt from there. Once by the time you just like, I have one brand or two brands I stick with now. It's like, man, I might pop up, something might pop up. Like, I like that shirt. I'll Thank get you. that one. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the discretionary span. So school's starting here. Um, I got three kids. I think they got new backpacks, new shoes, and, and like an outfit or something. Oh, God. Two thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, so so it, it, so then you turn that spend off real quick. Uh, <laughs> not, not as much discretionary income as it used to be. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit about what are we do with all this. We've updated everybody on where things are. We've depressed everyone. You know, they're all crying right now, saying, "You know, is what it is." Like, like I said, the question starts to become, "Well, when does it change? Will rates have to change first? 
then the effect starts to take place. I mean, it could be a year, it could be two years before we see real impact and the less, less you see rates move down rapidly. And there's a few people on the board, the Federal Reserve Board, that are starting to call for that. Uh, but we'll, they, they have been very stubborn in the past, so we'll see if they, they change. But that being said, there, there does come a point in time when you can only get so skinny. You, you can't play, you can't win the game, you know, by, you never grow your, or you never shrink your rate way to greatness. You, you got to start playing some offense. So I use an example, uh, construction industry, been just hammered. In the fall of last year, I've got a client in the construction industry and they changed their marketing up, took some risks a little bit, deployed a little bit of capital there, and they added to their sales team at probably the worst point in profitability in company history. And guess what? They're starting to see an uptick now because they finally went out and they stole market share. That market hasn't increased, but they went out and stole it. So at some point, you've got to reserve enough dry power to be able to relaunch that kit and play some offense. Uh, so keep that in mind. As you're looking at that checking account at the capital and it's, it's going down, down, don't ride the thing into the ground. You've got to have some dry powder to, to come back. Well, hey, Brandon, I was telling a group that uh, this week, you know, some of the people that have zero, tra- uh, zero sales trend and, uh, you know, we were talking about getting profitable with what you have. And they were like, well, hey, you know, t- you know tell me the reason why, right? And I, I talked about like, hey, getting that 10% or greater profit is going to bring in that cash flow, improve that cash position. And then just like Brandon said, then you can go out, make that strategic investment and go. Um, so those people that are sitting there, maybe like 5% profit, you increase that to 10, 15%. And hey, that happens over the next four, five, six months. Um, then all of a sudden, that cash is there, and then you go out and just like Brandon said, yeah. you make that sales investment or marketing investment or some sort of strategic investment to to grab that market share. Exactly. Yeah, you got. If you don't have the capital, you got to get profitable to get the capital. Uh, or if if you have it, you got to reserve and allocate it. Make sure that I don't sit around and wait to keep buying hope. I got to reserve some to then then relaunch and play some offense, and that's the way out. It's going to be different for every every company, depending upon what their competitive landscape looks like and what industry they're in. But there kind of comes a point where it's like, all right, we've done all we can do. We, we've stabilized things. we got to go play offense now. And so, you know, it's that, that exercise of you, you first are going through getting profitable with what you have, but then as soon as that starts to happen, you got to be thinking offensively. And what do we got to change? Like, so it's a different environment than what we've seen in the past. You can't just go dust off the playbook from 2019 and go, these are the places we run. I've got to relate to the customer today and what they're thinking and, and look at my value proposition in the marketplace. I said that about 10 times. So I, I really believe that that's extremely important right now um, to determine that and then go out and deliver it. Because at that point, your competition, they didn't, they did not right size when they should have. They didn't control direct labor. They didn't control management labor. They kept things on autopilot of the marketing. They're running out of cash. Now they, they can't play the game. You can play. So that's the hope. That, that's what we're all looking forward to. That's much more fun. It's more fun to play offense and defense as a business owner. And so that's what we got to move to and we got to look at. Um, but generally speaking, we still got a tough road ahead of us uh, as far as that part goes. So I am, I am proud, though, a lot of our clients who have not seen sort of that, that sales growth um, have done a good job of well, looking down that line of what we talked about. They've tried to increase gross margin. They've revisited that labor spend of, of understanding that, hey, do I have the right people in the right seats doing the right thing? Um, they've looked at that operating expense spend. They've looked at their marketing spend. And, and that group has done a great job. And while they might have declined a little bit in profit, as Brandon said, they've sort of stabilized. And, and I said this to a few of my clients, like, hey, honestly, we don't have great profit right now, but I'm not looking at your business saying you're making bad decisions or it's because you've just run into market forces. You've been able to stabilize it. And any uptick in sales for a lot of the businesses I work with, they're going to be golden. Yeah. And so now it's like, okay, hey, is there any opportunities we can get to go seize that revenue now, um, now that the business is stabilized and, uh, you know, grow the, you know, and maybe grow the cash in the meantime to then go do it. So I'm, re- I'm really impressed with the, a lot of the group we work with, able to able to look at those things and, and make those adjustments. So you identify your salary cap. We talk about in the first simple numbers book. What can I spend on salaries in any gross margin environment? Then, you know, it's the exercise of everybody's name goes on the whiteboard. Put the dollar amount. Who are you moving over from the left to the right? And, and the folks you moved over with that dollar amount is all I can spend in my salary cap. We got to go make it work in there. 
Uh, you're seeing folks that were in a little bit of a player coach role in a lot of cases. They're doing more playing than coaching right now. And they're jumping back in to do a little like the entrepreneur team more involved in sales. Sometimes the management team has to, to get a little bit more involved in, in delivering the product or the service, at least temporarily, until we can find our way back through it. You put, you put the business on first control right now, and the market will rip your face off. It's rough. So you got you got to stay nimble uh, and, and find a way to make it work. And hope is, if you ever say it a thousand times, hope is not strategy. No one's coming to save us. We got to figure a way out of this on our own because the market it's going to take a while. Even you know, let, let's say magically interest rates that a couple of folks on the Fed are saying we need a three quarter point rate reduction. Let's say magically they got together and made that happen. It will take some time for that to trickulate through the economy. So you're not going to see an overnight change. So we got we got to continue to follow through with our strategy, lean and mean, get profitable with what we have, and get ready to play some offense. So awesome, great way to end. Yeah. Yeah. This is better news, you know. You, you, you yeah. know, I told the client the other day, you get on a phone call with, you know, we're we're having the four, five, six, seven calls a day. Here we consult it is, and you get on there, you're just sharing this information time and time again. I got called the bag of rocks. <laughs> yeah. you like, you're, really, you're really a bag. You're really a bag. You're really a bag of rocks today, Mike. It's like, a... <laughs> wasn't too far off there. No, I know. Yeah, it's a... we'll, we'll find a way. This is the first time we've been in one of these. I'll tell you this: coming out of 2008, our clients had some of their best years in history because they had capital. Their competitors were suffering. Their vendors were suffering and went to their vendors and did really cool things like, guess what? I know, you know, I know a lot of people owe you money. They got past due receivables. I'll pay you within seven days, but I need a little bit of a discount. Stuff like that. They, they were able to get aggressive with marketing. They were able to grow their teams. And they come out of this thing just with rock stars. And so I think that that opportunity is going to be present again if you play it smart now. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, for everyone listening, for everyone listening, um, you know, hopefully uh, next. Next podcast, we're going to have a special guest on, uh, talk through some things. Um, that's what we want to do. And, um, you know, obviously we are obviously are thinking of our topics, but, um, if you want to hear something, hear us chime in on something, um, you know, uh, feel free to shoot us an email, uh, hit us up on LinkedIn, um, something like that. We'll gladly talk about it and, and touch base with it. Or if any just questions you want to ask, um, we'll definitely talk. Maybe we'll do, if we get enough, we'll maybe just do a, and impromptu podcast and just get and answer your questions me and brandon do yeah me and brandon do podcasts for our clients and usually it's just right you know we just get carpet bombed and have to have to answer questions there, so we're pretty I mean, good at my mike can tell war stories and i can tell you know, <laughs> yeah, terrible right. later than analogies so I mean, yeah we'll yeah somewhere to ride with brandon through like the backwoods alabama driving somewhere and it's some of the best entertainment of my life is he gets deeply southern and comments on everything little stores little everything it's, it's gold man maybe maybe brandon will do a traveling podcast where we do that oh, yeah. and yeah it'd be a hit well, all right <laughs> well <laughs> we'll stop about to go it's about to go off the rails so <laughs> all right everyone yes. for brandon for brandon i'm mike uh see you next time take care If you want to know more about driving sustainable profitability for your business or are interested in learning more about CRI Simple Numbers, please visit our website at simplenumberscri.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Profitability Playbook, the Simple Numbers podcast. You can subscribe to Profitability Playbook on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you prefer to listen to podcasts. If you liked what you heard today, please leave us a review. The views expressed on Profitability Playbook, the Simple Numbers podcast, are those of the presenter and moderator and do not necessarily reflect the views of CRI Simple Numbers or the CRI family of companies. This podcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to replace professional advice received directly. Consult with your CRI Simple Numbers advisor or another trusted professional if you have questions about your specific situation.